Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today is January 26th, 2017, and this is our episode number 74. Today we continue looking at American public companies uh, that are drawn uh, randomly. If you just landed on this episode and you would like to figure out how I go about randomizing the companies, please uh, take a look at episode number 58 for the American companies and the first 13 or so episodes for Brazilian companies. Uh, so today we have a company called The Chef's Warehouse. Uh, it's a company I had never heard about. Please keep in mind that I haven't been in the United States in over seven years. So that's a long time. Uh, but our methods here, uh, they work. Uh, of course, you, you need to have a, a feeling for the reality of a company, but just to have a, an overall view of a company, uh, we actually can look at it, you know, we look at it, the balance, balance sheets and so on and so forth, and that's what we're going to do. So it's not absolutely clear what the chef's warehouse does just by this, uh, looks like an e-commerce uh, outfit. Um, I, m what I don't know here is what they sell. If they sell like the, the ingredients or they sell the tools or both. I don't know. But, you know, let's look at the, the financial health of the company first. So I found a link to investors. And we're go always going for the SEC filings and the official filings. Uh, so SEC filings, and we st I generally start by looking at the debt situation of a company, right? Uh, and I use the quarterlies, the ten Qs for that. So here it is. What I also need to do is um, I'm just opening my spreadsheet because I need to add an entry for the chef's warehouse. It's interesting to compare uh, the market, the public companies listed in Brazil with the public companies listed in the United States. And uh, one of the, uh, the ideas behind doing a real investment is understanding the companies, right? So you'll hear that from Warren Buffett, from, you know, every serious investor, and it makes sense, right? The thing is, for example, in Brazil with about 300 companies listed, it's really easy to pretty much know, you know, right out of the bat, to have heard about half of the companies listed easily this doesn't mean you really understand the business but you, you get a sense right however with the united states with uh i don't know seven thousand listed companies uh or at least stickers it's so common that you look at a company and you have no idea what the company actually does so it, it makes so much sense right it's unbelievable that you know you have no idea like how the company survives and stuff but it's so common anyway so what we're going to try to do again is to look at the debt to equity and we'll get the liabilities to equity too uh, so we can start by looking at the equity uh, it's in thousands so they have 184 million in equity. Okay, so we just add it here. And they do offer a line for total liabilities, and that's 448. So I would say about 2.5 times net equity. Let me see if my guess is right. 2.43, close enough. 
and oops. Uh, so now let's try to look at debt as such. So we they are uh, entries in, within liability. So accounts payable that's not really debt. Accrued liabilities vague but not necessarily debt. Accrued compensation not debt. Current portion of long-term debt definitely debt. So I'm just opening a calculator here. So that'll be 14 rounded, and then long-term debt another 319. Deferred tax is not debt. Other liabilities. I always look at this one. Uh, it's not a lot relative to the debt, uh, but it's it, it, these vague entries here. You know they they may add up. But anyway, like strictly speaking, they have 333 million in debt so just by looking at these numbers if you've watched past episodes you know what to do uh, this will be about 1.7 1.8 in debt to equity 1.8 and uh, this is the number we need and if you've watched past episodes you will know uh, about the the range we're looking for the acceptable range and the debt to equity should be uh, within uh, the range of 0 to 0 0.5. So meaning both two things, meaning the company has positive net equity. Otherwise, the debt to equity would be negative. Uh, and second thing, uh, the company does not owe too much money compared to what it owns. So here, in a sense, what we're saying is the company owes 1.8 times what it owns. So if the company was able to own X and it was able to owe almost 2X, at the very least, it will take a long time to, ba to, ba to pay back uh, what it owes, right? So, you know, before you, the owner uh, really, like, truly gets back its uh, its ownership uh, dues. Uh, the company uh, needs to pay back its debt. That's the seniority of these things, right? So, if the company goes bankrupt, the the senior things are, are is the debt. So they have priority in getting paid. So that's one of the many reasons you wanna avoid. Uh, companies with a large debt and that unfortunately is the case with the chef's warehouse okay this is a simplistic uh, assessment we're looking uh, for a broad overview of a large number of companies so we're being very broad in our in our defensive measures here and if it just doesn't meet this one we just go for the next one so for the chef's warehouse, we're stopping here for now. And uh, so 74 episodes in, uh, I haven't really gone as far as saying a company should be seriously looked at. Uh, we, we got close with even Construtora uh, in Brazil. And I was looking at it, I mean, very not long has passed but things are happening fast in terms of stock prices in brazil and uh i think even has gone up a little bit that doesn't mean much but um i can really really nail the point here which is uh really choose well you know it's it's completely uh we haven't looked at 74 companies we may have looked at 65 or something it's typical that you will pass on 65 companies or 130 companies or really like 500 one out of 500 companies will be will be uh, uh, uh the ideal investment following this uh methodology okay so that's how it is uh, one thing's for sure, when I find a company that is clearly worth investing, I'm going to say something to that effect. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, criticisms, suggestions, please write and I'll be happy to get back to you. And see you in future episodes. 
Have a great day. Bye-bye.